Welcome back to My Life as a Trainer with your host, Nova Champion Lance. We're back with another episode. I do have a small announcement. Pokemon Home is under maintenance. Or at least it should be at the time of recording. This recording links Arceus, Brilliant Diamond, and Shining Pearl to Pokemon Home. So there's so a few Pokemon that you have in another gen that you want to bring over. Feel free to do so. I'll try not to use it for this run, so we're basing it if not, but just know that it's there. I might show it off later. With that, we're going into the episode that we're not going to have fun with. After singing the Pokemon Center, it's time. Now for the gym. We're doing some more exploring today. Pastoria is huge. I'm sorry about bumping the mic. Pastoria Great Marsh Observatory Gate. So trainers deliberately prevent their Pokemon from evolving. They wait until a Pokemon levels up and learns certain moves. I almost did that with Titiana, who is early back day from hiatus. You're just like a totally impatient boy I met earlier. Just like you, he was very close to his Pokemon. Hey, thanks for making me smile. You might put a smile on your face. This trainer is the third one that gives out stickers based on your starter. And she gives us the bubble stickers. There's one. There's one in Veilstone, one in Jubilife, and one in Pastoria. They used to give out masks in Pearl, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. Now she gives out stickers. Ah, this is so annoying. What is it? Oh, some kid with only three gym badges? Little chores like you should know to stay out of Team Galactic's way. Now this package from Veilstone. Where should I set it off? Yep, this is going to be a smashing job for Team Galactic. Smashing. Nah, it's not. Let's go upstairs in this building first before we go downstairs. When you're walking on the bog, you sometimes sink right in. I guess some fluster trying to get out. I have no luck hitching anything. Use a pair of binoculars to look out over the Great Marsh and see what kinds of Pokemon can be caught and where they are. Tell me I'm not imagining this. The Great Marsh's Pokemon seem to be different from the ones yesterday. There are shuttle trains in the marsh called Quick Trams. You should take those if you're going to a deeper area in the marsh. Well, let's use one of these binoculars, shall we? Let's put 100 in. It's hard to use, but you can see in this area we got, ooh, by barrel. Not really interested. In this area we got Quagsire. Ooh, that's an area we want to target. Over here, Golduck. Ooh. Over here we got Psyduck. Huh, interesting. Oh, what's that in front of us? Azural. Ooh. Some new mons in there. How about we go try and find some of them, shall we? First, let's talk to this lady. Welcome to the Great March. Is this your first safari game? Well, it's not mine, but tell people at home. When you enter the Great March, you receive 30 safari balls. That's the only kind of ball you're allowed to use in a safari game. The game's over when you run out of safari balls or when you've walked 500 steps. Please do enjoy the untamed nature of the Great March. Welcome to the Great Marsh, the home of Pastoria Safari Game. All you can catch with just 500. Would you like to play a safari game? Yes, that'll be 500, please. Here are your safari balls. You see 30 safari balls. Let you know when your game is over. Until then, enjoy yourself, please. Off you go on your wild excursion. And here's the Great Marsh. We're going to talk about it a little bit in a few... The Great Marsh, welcome to the Safari Zone. Yes, that's right, Safari Zone. Same was the one in Lavender Town, Kanto, Johto Route 48, and Hone Route 121. These are a thing. Please hold up by the area by, for the area by area report. We're going to be doing them one by one. I'll say the exact same thing. Trust me, it's a long section. Sit down, get ready. We're going to start with the bottom right zone, Marsh Area 6. The most important area, if you do not want to catch Pokemon, then you have to at least collect the item here. 
Like I say, we got a TM97 and a Paralyzed Seal. We got a hyper, hidden Hyper Potion and a Defog app, which you're gonna want to collect. I'll explain why soon. But Mons in this area, we got a Psyduck, 8% chance. And it's a level 20 to 22. Anytime on the 8%, by the way. Hoot Hoot, 20% chance at night, 20 to 22. Starly is level 22. Voodoo is level 20. They're both 10% in the morning and afternoon. They get replaced by the Hoot Hoot at night. Your Great Marsh Area 6 also contains a Bi Barrel at 1% and B Doof level, tw uh, well, level 21. 20% 20 chance. The Bi Barrel is level 22 in case I didn't say it. The Merrill here, which is the first new Mon. Well, 21 to 22, 50% chance. This does have an effect. This is affected by something, though. Whooper, level 20, 20% 20 chance. Anytime. This one's also affected by something. That's why they're not in order. That's why they're not next to the Brethren. Because these two have a special thing that we'll talk about in a few. Quagsire, 15% chance, 21 to 22. Azurol, 1% chance, level 20. Next up, we have Area 5, the Bomb Luff Zone. There's not much to talk about in the zones, because they're mostly the samey. However, it's nice, big, and open. Perfect for mon hunting. Well, this one, anyway. 10% chance of Starly level 22 or Bidu level 20 in the morning and afternoon. Again, your Hoot Hoot replaces at night, 20 or 22. 20% chance. Your Body Barrel goes up to 5% at level 22, and Bidoof is level 21. 20% chance. Your new mods, again, Whooper, 20% chance, level 20 anytime. Merrill, 21 to 22, 15% chance anytime. Quagsire, 21 to 22, 15% chance. And Azuro goes up to 5% chance, level 20. Areas 3 and 4 of the Great, Great Marsh. The middle zones. The lower half. Of both have water filled areas. There's some areas that maybe something maybe something worth it in there. Then again, you never know. Area three has honey and an ultra ball. Area four is super potion, pokeball, and a nugget. And it's not a chicken nugget either. It's a good five thousand dollars. Get your money back for this adventure. Psyduck, twenty or twenty four, eight percent. Hoo hoo, twenty one to twenty well, twenty two or twenty four, twenty percent at night. Again, it's replaced by Starly and Bidu, level 24 and 22 respectively, 10% each of them morning and afternoon. Your buy barrel goes to 20% at not, at any time, level 23. I almost said at night, it's any time. Your Bidu is 24, 1% chance. Now for these guys... Meryl, 50% chance, 23 or 24. Whooper, level 22, 20% chance. Quagsire, 50% chance, 23 or 24. And Azur Azurl, 22, 1% chance. If you notice I'm having trouble saying that name, there's a very good reason why, and it'll be explained later. But just I'm trying not to say something different. Areas 1 and 2, the top zones, the last ones, they are ledge heavy. Often once you drop out of the zone, you'll need to walk all the way back over. It even has nice items. Area 1 has a potion and a super repel. Area 2 has a great ball and a hidden toxic plate. You want the toxic plate. Again, Pokemon 24-26 for the Psyduck, 8% chance. Hoot Hoot 24 is only 10% chance, but the Noctowl there is also 10% chance since level 26. These are at night. Voodoo, 10% chance, morning and afternoon. I move Starly over here. It's 26, 10% chance, morning and afternoon. Your Bidoof is 20% chance, anytime, level 25. And Bi Barrel is 1% chance, level 26. The last one is the new Mons again. <clears throat> 25 to 26 for a Meryl, 15% chance of it appearing. Whooper, 24, 20% chance. Quagsire, 25 to 26, 15% chance. And Azuril, 24, 1% chance. Now I gotta go over something with you. 
these are the Safari Zone changing mons. The anytime mons that could appear is Golduck, Roselia, and Staravia with a 3 out of 32 chance. Your Scorpy, your Krogunk, and your Carnivine is a 5 out of 32 chance. These mods can be selected to appear in any area of the Safari Zone. The selection rotates at midnight. You can tell which zone has what by using the binoculars on the second floor. What do you saw us do? Until you get the national decks, the second group, which I'm about to list, will also be in the pool. Which is Meryl, which is a 1 in 32. Wooper, 2 in 32. Quagsire is 1 in 32. Meryl's 2 in 32. Beedoo's 1 in 32. And Bye Barrel's 1 in 32. And together, both columns, they equal 32. They'll still be in the marsh as well. The base odds of appearing is increased 10% if they are listed for that area. Maryland Quagsire usually you lose 5% each. The odds listed for the areas are based on both being selected. Now, that means if it's a 15 and they're not the ones listed, they drop down to 10. If they are listed, it goes up 5. So if Meryl's in a section, it goes up to 20. If it go, if it's not, it goes down to 10. If it's a mod that's not there, it goes from 0 to 10. That's how it basically works. There's 10% saved for any mod that's not it. Finally, Safari Zone rules. No fighting. Pokemon battles do not happen here. You cannot use your Pokemon here. They will not gain experience either. Bad place to train. Don't train here if you're looking to evolve a mon. Go in the underground and find your mon there if you're looking for it for training. Second, Safari Balls only. You can only use Safari Balls here. No other balls can be used. Once you're out of the 30 balls you're given, you're kicked out. So much for all you can catch, right? 30 balls, all you can catch? Yeah, not a lot. Limited distance. You can only walk 500 steps before you're kicked out and you're done by PA system. You'll be thrown right out. The last thing, bait and mud only. Bait and mud modify the catch and run rates. Bait makes it easier, mud makes it harder. This is for both of them. I have looked on multiple areas, they give me inconclusive, but that's the most common I found. And that lady confirmed with me that that's probably what they are. Use bait and mud to your advantage if you want. Now that we've gone over all that, Asher's entered. We're going to start going to the left. Quick, quick, on the sticks. To and fro we go, we're quick. If you're thinking about going deep into the marsh, I recommend you take the Great Marsh Quick Trans, which are right above me. Now, hold on, we're gonna go this way, but try this person, they found something during the Safari game. Asher missed this, so we're actually time traveling to get this. So this is the future, he had to come back and get this on later on. This person here that we're gonna miss, each of these TMs contains Defog, but none of my Pokemon can learn that move. You be doing me a favor, you took these. Yes, Defog. You obtained TM97s. So yes, Defog is right there. Right at the start. It also gives you Defog and him moves up, and there's another thing that has with having Defog. Back to our normally scheduled thing. Yeah. Don't forget to grab Defog. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. You do need it for something. Yes, you do. Don't. Don't play with me. You need that defog. Yes, you do. If you don't get that defog and you're watching the episode and you ask me where that something is, I'm going to scold you for it. Because I'm telling you, you need defog for that later. Trust me on that. And here's a whooper. Now, you can see you can only use ball, bait, mud, or run. And we have 30 balls, so I'm just going to throw a safari ball at it. Honestly, this works best for me, just chucking and praying. So, throw and hope. And we got Wooper. Wooper's day will be added to the Pokedex. When the temperature cools in the evening, they emerge from water to seek food along the shore. Yes, there is a gender difference to them. Do I have to give Wooper a nickname? Yes. Now, I've been meaning to do this for after I found out someone's name was wrong, was not the favorite Pokemon, so we're gonna fix J and put TGHSR as we did. 
I'm not sure I'm keeping the underground mon that we found, the uh, Gastrodon, as TGH for gaming story. And yeah, I'm still thinking on it. It's still, you know, in my mind. But we're not going to add to a party. We're going to send to a box and we're going to up its description. Whooper additional data. This little guy is the generation 2 bad boy that causes a lot of trouble. A good leveling up, this guy causes damage. I won't reveal the surprise why yet. The little tap pool learns some poison moves too. If you haven't used one and you're not using Piplup, get one. No, seriously. If you're not using Piplup or Gastrodon, get one of these guys. Now, I'm going to come up here. We're going to grab this item. It's an antidote. I'm not aiming for anything specific. We're just going to do a quick tour. So, right now we're in Area 1. The way it's split is if you take the tram and split it in half vertically, the odds are on the left, the evens are on the right. Then you got the bottom section, which is the low numbers. I mean, no, the bottom section is the high numbers, the top section is the low numbers. And yeah, the whooper fled. Don't care. Now we're coming up this way. Here's a five barrel. Don't need one of those, so we're not gonna want any. I will use bait and mud at one point during this, so don't worry. But yeah, we're in area five right now, and you can see we can quit if we want out of the safari zone. And we can see how many balls left, but we can't see our steps remaining. Not like it matters. I usually finish up before I use up all the steps anyway. Now we're entering area three and four. This is area three. Like I said, odds on the left, evens on the right. Highest to lowest. Lowest on the bottom, highest. The Highest on the bottom, lowest on the top. You know what's sad? I'm doing my hand motions. I say lowest on the top, highest on the bottom. When I say highest on the bottom, I'm holding the thing down, but I say lowest on the bottom. It's like, yeah. Oh, here's a Quagsire. Quagsires are good. Expect one of these guys later. So let's see if we can get one now. And by the way, here's what bait does. It's eating. It's watching carefully. I should throw a ball right now. And then I throw bait again. Don't worry, you have infinite bait and infinite mud. I mean, look, the mud's all around you. Just pick up a nice clot of it and flack. Now, it doesn't go one stage. When you throw bait or mud, it goes in a random one to five number. Sorry about hitting the mic again, by the way. So it goes from one to five randomly. It's like this mud, well, I didn't use mud, but I ran. Say I throw bait at a bee dude. It'll choose one to five and assign the number to its run. I'm going to change my area. I'm going to go... I think I'm supposed to go... I want to go up, so I'm going to go to one. But I'll just show you that. Yeah, five and six are forward. Or the bottom. So if you want to go to an area quickly, just use this. You can't go to the area across from you. You actually have to go... You know, up or down. You can easily just cross. But here's area one and two. We're gonna be in area one for a little bit while I keep explaining. So I throw bait at Wooper, right? The game says three for catch, but it does two for run. I'll throw another one. I'll get two on catch, five on run. So it's five and seven, right? Now I'll throw mud at him. It'll drop it. So I'll have four on catch. Well, let's just say it's another five on run. That seven becomes a two. And that adjusts the rate. So basically it just, you know, it's all luck. Just throw the Pokeballs. Don't freaking worry about using mud or whatever. This is 90% luck anyway, and that is all garbage. Honestly, you're dealing with someone who's played red, gold, and a whole lot of others. He's out with these safaris are way too much to give a rat's behind. He's done it legit. 
He's done the missing no method in the original. He's done the stuff in other gens. He hates this thing. He's done it in Gen 4 and hated it. Just throw your Pokeball at him. In fact, we'll even do something else later to make it easier on us. And there's a potion. Really, we're gonna do something to make this a lot easier on us. We don't really need to spend much time in here. This can eat me. Yeah, I really don't like the Safari Zone. I like an Arceus, I can sneak up behind the mods and just throw and pray. Because that adds a little bit of strategy to it. Like you can throw and him in the back for an extra bonus. You got the food you can feed him to sneak, to, you know, get him to turn and get him unaware. That's fun. Plus the ball of mud, if you hit him in the face, you stun him. That also helps a lot more. By the way, do you notice Carnivine was on the list here? And Carnivine is in the Great Marsh in Arceus. Well, the second area. And they're annoying as in that game. But they're here too. So, yeah. Get ready for Carnivine here. Not fun. And yes, the other ones are here. The crow gunks are here too, and in that area. And then Narcissus, I will try to make connections if I can for like interesting bits, but like I said, this area can go bite me. I mean, the balls are nice camel pattern, but yeah, this place just, ugh. I hate it. I'm not kidding. Meryl hates it too. Come here, you little... Are you gonna join me, or are you gonna run? I'll say, you're probably gonna run. If I catch this tonight, we're all getting Kakariko Fried Chicken. It's actually not running. I shouldn't say Kekarika Fried Chicken, we should say Kanto Fried Chicken. It's KSC, it's Pokemon World, it's Kanto, and we're all getting Kanto Fried Chicken tonight. Unfortunately, my coupon is expired by four years, so we won't be getting it. Meryl's Day will be added to the Pokedex, though. The two of his tail is filled with oil that's lighter than water, so it acts as a float. This one's Water Fairy. It's got a type change that made it a little more viable. I'll tell you about it in a second. Meryl additional data, the Jerusalem 2 rumor itself, not as harmless as it once was. The addition of being a fairy type makes it very useful. The now water fairy type Pokemon is useful to cover some types if you need it. Hopefully Meryl can have a spawn your team if you need a fairy type. Or not if you don't. I know the baby form shown, but I'll explain why later. Just stick with me. Here's a Quagsire. Now you notice that Wooper was water ground, right? Quagsire's water ground. These guys are very nice to get. You do want to acquire the Sire. Trust me on this. And then after, go look at the video, acquire the Sire on YouTube. I'll probably put it in the description. Because these guys are amazing. These guys have carried a Gen 2 run for me in the past. The trick is with them, they're water ground. So anytime you run to an electric type with them, just like Gastrodon, it gives you an advantage. So instead of the electric types getting and ruining you, you cause them chaos. Here's the data to the Pokedex for you. A dim-witted Pokemon it doesn't care if it bumps its head into boats or rocks while swimming. Donk. Donk. Yeah, it doesn't care. Then in box, here's the additional date on, on Quags. Welcome to Trouble. Mudkip before Mudkip was cool. A vicious water ground type. Now that he's an adult, he has a wider move pool. Plus his weaknesses make him vicious. Do not be surprised that a water gym would have at least one of these. Or two or more. For those of you not paying attention, please make sure you've read that twice. 
There'll be an exam in two episodes. Honk, honk. I think the Pokemon you find here are different over time. I did mention that earlier. So we're coming down around from Area 2 to Area 4 now. And here's a Meryl. Don't you love a Meryl? Here's a Mud Ball. Let's make it harder to catch and run. There you go. It's angry. It's watching carefully. I don't really need a Meryl because we've already got one, so I'm just going to mud this one away. But speaking of mud, we're in a bog. Ash is wearing a white shirt with blue pants. The overalls, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, but that shirt's going to be a mess and a half after. That's never going to come clean after being through this bog. The world of Pokemon will make it look like it's clean, but it's not. It's going to be a mess. There used to be a glitch in here where you'd fall into the bog, and then you can press the button slowly to turn, and you get into encounters and not waste any steps. Now, I'm also going to bring this up now because that's how you escape if you get into a sunken hole that you saw me do earlier. If you fall into a deep hole, mash the buttons quickly to get out. I know I'm explaining a lot because there's a lot to explain in this little area that I hate so much. And here's a whooper. We're not going to need it. You can fish in the lakes. I will bring them up later when we do the collectathon. I'll put the collectathon list when we go through there. I figured I'd just do that because we got a lot of areas to catch up on and I haven't made the card yet due to the hiatus. I'm still catching up on things. Trust me, I'm behind. I got le leveled by things from the hiatus. And I'm still trying to catch up with things going on. Here's another Voodoo. Voodoo? You do. What? Remind me of the babe. Sorry, I had to go a little David Bowie there, but here's a Pokeball. See the bog of mud the bomb right? That will get you stuck in it. That's what I mean by you'll get into encounters easier that way. But I don't think it works in Platinum, and I don't know if it works in this version. I'm not about to try it out. This time you get stuck in a bog area and there's grass, to try it. And record your results. There's an item ball to my right. I'm going to go for it. It's a Starly. It's a buddy. We don't need the birdie. No need for birdie. If I need it, I grab it. Here's a super potion. Again, we don't really need that right now, but we'll grab it anyway. No trainers in here, so when you're walking on a boggy path, sometimes you get stuck down. Getting free of the bog takes time, which is a luxury in a safari game. Yeah, because it doesn't catch your stats when you're sunken in. Here's another mare roll. Here's another mare roll. We don't need the mare roll. Run away, run away, all get away. Or we're just going to try to catch it anyway. Hey, getting a second one might actually help because it's the other gender. There is a reason for this. Meryl can, is actually the middle form. We want the baby form. So we can either catch two and hope, or we can catch one of the baby form by finding it. Let's catch Meryl. We're not going to give it a nickname. We're just going to send it to a box. Now, we are running low on time. And we're in Area 4 right now. We're not going to be able to fully explore Area 6, which is going to be a problem for Asher because he needs the fog. He hasn't grabbed it yet. He's going to miss the one person he needed to talk to. Oh, no. That's a problem and a half. And he's a bye barrel. Bye, Barrel. And yes, we are going around to the lake. Another Meryl. Meryl, Meryl, Barrel, Meryl. Goodbye, Meryl. And if we come down this way, we'll enter Area 6. Hop down this fence. Here's Area 6. Here's an item. Paralyzed Heal. 
And now we're gonna run back and I was gonna talk to that person. I should have ran the other way. I could have stayed a couple more steps because guess what? Two steps! Two steps of talking to that one person and missing out on defog. That happened. And that's it. That's all that happens. I guess we're done for now. I do have other things to talk the train. I was just in there. Bye bye. Uh, do I want to try for Defog again? No. I'll try for later. I you notice I only have one try left, so. I mean, if it was Carnivine or something, I would, but nah. We got him. Oh. I think I'm putting him in the party. Yeah, we'll give Biddy a break. And this trio. It's squishy. Oh, huh. Hmm. You know what? I'll show you how to rename a box. If I click on the box header, you can actually change its wallpaper to any of the following. And trust me, there's a lot of them. So you have options for almost any type you want. You want a flying Pokemon box? You can use the sky, you can use river for water, sea floor if you really need deep water. You got the beach one. You got perfect cave for your rock and ground. You got snow for your ice mons, volcano for your hot mons, the crag itself. I mean, you got plenty of options. You can pick whatever box you want. However you want to organize it. If you want to organize by number, by weight, by actual number that was added to the game, whatever you want to do, you can do for your boxes. I'm not going to tell you how to sort them. That's not me. You sort it the way you want to. Just note that there's a lot of wallpapers. There's some from Platinum. There's some classic ones, too. <coughs> you got options. Pick the one that works best for you that you like the most. And feel free to change them up if you want to quick identify which ones are which. Trust me, having a different does help. Now, once you have your background selected, you can go and change its name by also hitting the header and hitting change its name. Now for this box, what do I do? What do I do with this box? Uh, R E N. Mm. 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 Unnamed. N A M E D. That sounds good. I'll just leave it that. There we go. So now I need to name these. I did the same thing here with the unknown box. I changed its wallpaper and header. Now I just need to put TGH, the game story, in somewhere else. I might just keep it. I am thinking about keeping it. Drop that there. I'll pick the mural up. Pop it here. You two. Drop you two down here. Ta da! Next up. I'm going to take the Super Potion off of Will Shan. Now, I do have Shan in the party for a good reason, and I'll explain in a few. But let's just say it has to do with HUDs. You see, HUDs has two evolutions. One of them is by Friendship, which we're working on. The other needs an item that William Shan can pick up for us. So we're waiting for Will Shan to find that item. 
Now I'm gonna ask a funny. What do you think the odds are that during the gym, we'll pick up that item? Note that I still need to evolve HUDs, which we're gonna do in a few seconds. If it happens before, then it doesn't count. But what do you think the odds are of Will Shand picking up the item we need for HUDs during the gym? If the gym episode, which is two episodes from now, goes up and you haven't guessed, then you're already gonna know the answer, so there's no use in trying. But if not, take your guess now. By the way, here's where we go for in Pastoria. Yes, we do not hit that low section. There's lower than Pastoria. We can go south of Pastoria. So we can't get there yet. Oh no, right? So we can't reach that big southern area until after we've done something. Now I should bring up the question I was going to bring up to you guys. Do you remember what I said about having a certain po Pokemon ability? Well, a certain item? I'll explain in a few why you want this, but take a look at the mons right now. They're the strength set still. Which means the fall and strength that mons are active. Yes, it has to do with down here. This is why you want to pick up Defog. Not to put it on Pokemon, not to add to your HMs, which you do want to do if you want. I'll make it a little easier, but. But for down here. When I say there's a mon, you want to get down here. And you want defog, because that's the only way it'll appear. Are you really gonna deny me that? Are you really gonna deny me telling you to get defog? Because there's a mon down here you want. Oh, you are? Oh, you still gotta say, oh, too bad? Alright. I'll let you keep with that thought for a little bit longer. I'm just going to raise HUDs and evolve and I'll show you why you're wrong. Why you want the fog and then come back down here. I'll show you. And here's a wild on onyx. Onyx offix. Onyx offix. Offix. Yes, I know. Onyx. Uh, stone. I know. I get it. I'm being funny. On off. Deal with me a little bit. The most on I've been all day. Slash him. Kytiana finishing the mission for us. Timber! And that should be level 30. Now hopefully we've done enough friendship bonding with HUDs to evolve him. We'll see in a second. Yes! HUD 601 is evolving! Amazing! And here's Roselia. We do want this one. Here's the data to the Pokedex. The beautiful flowers on its arms are toxic thorns. Don't you think about picking those flowers. Hot 601 wants to learn to move Giga Drain. Do move be forgotten and replaced with Giga Drain. Yes. We're gonna skip Mega Drain and go right to Giga. Trust me, it's good for Roselli to have this. We're gonna need it. I also want to learn to move Poison Sting. I could give a care less about it, but I'll learn it anyway. I guess I'll give her a Worry Seed. Worry Seed just replaces their thing with Insomnia, but this works better. Roselia Additional Data, the flower Pokemon of Gen 3, a very reliable Grassmon. Not my favorite in a wide pool, but still a good durable creature. Add Dazzling Gleam and Shadow Ball to extend its reach. You can add Venoshock to work with his Poison Point ability, or add a Barb to help. So I can Paralyze, and I can Paral- I can Paralyze, I can Poison, and I got my move. 
Let's see if we can do anything else with it by looking at the mover learner, shall we? Did I skip any good moves? Did I? We'll see. I'll pop in here and look. Hello! Do you want me to teach your Pokemon a move? Yes. Ugh. Which one should I teach? Uh, hmm. Magical Leaf's quite good, but... Hmm. Pox Spike's not... No, I guess I can relearn its sweet scent. Having HUDs learn it could be useful. At least for now. I mean, having one of our main hitters have it is good for when we need it. Don't rely on combi. Plus, we can use it in the underground. No, we can't use it in the underground. I was about to say we could, but no. I don't think we can. But what he can do is give this guy a, a grass plate back. What do I mean by giving him back a grass plate? Remember what I just took up from him and gave him a few day episodes ago? The suit bell? I'll get him back. It is a nice little plate. Because we don't need to be friendly anymore, we can give it back the meadow plate, which will power up the grass type move, which is Giga Drain. I could also go with Giant Root for an awesome effect. Either one works. I like the grass plate though. So we're going to give him the meadow plate and hopefully he has a nice day. I am going to check his HM list. I mean, if there's anything I want to learn, it's not grass or poison at the moment. I want to say there isn't. But you know, it's good to, not, to look and check and make sure because you never know what surprises. No. Okay, it looks like we probably don't. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's a no. Hmm. 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 I could, but I already got a good grass move. No. Nah. I don't think we have anything good that I could use. Nope. All right. So I think we're pretty much golden with HUDs. And I will show you that, yes, I got the member card in Oaks letter for later on events. I'll be hopefully you guys did too with me mentioning it. I will be going over, probably not these because I've already explained most of them already, or will be. The Pokeballs I'll explain a little later, I do have to do some during the short episode, try, which during the collect-a-thon, I'll probably go over a lot of these, like I'll take episodes and I'll go over stuff, because those I can shorten and keep at a specified length, like these where I gotta reach a certain point. Like you don't want me to spend two episodes in the Grand Marsh, do you? Do you? Nah? Good. I don't want to spend two episodes in there either. I don't want to spend two episodes on a route if I can get through the route in one. So that's why I'm saying we'll get to it. We want to move a little bit forward. We're going to save the adventure. I'm going to go show you some more future stuff. I mean by future stuff? Well... I have to catch him defogging as far as I cause zero. Yes, it's on a different day. This is the same day I got defogged. Azuril's day will be at the Pokedex. I will get to that in a little bit. Its tail is filled with nutrients necessary for growth. It plays by bouncing. A Cubomon, his line was thought to be Pika Blue at one point. Part of Gen 4, this mod would evolve with a quirk. I'd like to say one other LP here has at least said it and with enthusiasm. It grows up. Beep! I usually find one too late to be used. 
Maybe I could use it now because of a type change. But yeah. Like I said, I was planning to get this one first and then Meryl later, but it's the way it went, so that's why the cards were in reverse. I can now hear in the underground, you see a new Mon sitting right there, which I'll come back to in a sec. I want to see if we can find the other new Mon. This is why you need a defog. Pearl players, pay attention. Pearl, hopefully you're paying attention, because you definitely don't want to see this. And don't forget Diamond, I'm not forgetting about you too. There's two Mons I'm going to show off right here. You're going to want, want both of them, especially if you're playing Pearl. Diamond's going to have to get help. Hmm. Now, what do I mean by two new mods? Well, this is the first one that we're going after. Meet Per Ugly. Yes, Per Ugly. I'm not kidding. It's an ugly kitty. We do want to catch at least two of these if we're playing Pearl. Because, guess what? Diamond needs a trade for it. Diamond had their trade for Mon for I don't know how long. Do you remember Stunky? Remember Stunky? Yes. That Mon, you trade for this one. So last round you got messed over because Stunky and Stun Tank were brought to the underground. Now you get this Mon. Oddly, his Peavold's form isn't brought down here. Weird. But yes, you're going to want to catch at least one of these and breed it. If you don't want to catch one of these now, it's going to be a while before you find this Peavold form in the wild. What do I mean by a while? Seven badges. So, does this not sell you on getting Defog? Now you still think you can get through it and not need this and catch it later? Alright. I'll skip to its next entry. If you didn't want to learn Attract, Pearl's day will be at the Pokedex. The may itself appear intimidatingly beefy is slightly sinking to the tail around its waist. Well, its waist, yeah. The fluffy tail around its waist. And we're going to send this to a box. A huge ugly kitty with a nasty attitude. They're so mean, however. With some help from TMs, you can get that. You could. Bleh. They are so mean, however, with some help from TMs, you can get that you could come up with a decent moveset that could prove to be useful. Not one of my favorite mons to use, especially as Pergly comes late in the game. Ugh, as Pergly comes late in the game. Wow, I can do that without burping. Excuse me. Now, let's see if I can find the other one in here. I'm also going to bring a little shand out. So, Perugly didn't sell you on getting Defog, huh? Getting an HM that's now a TM didn't get you, huh? Alright. Alright, let's see if the other one will taste... Well, I'll take your taste buds. So, you see... Now... Ooh! What's that up there? What's that? Huh? Huh? Is that... It's a Munchlax! You know those Munchlax trees I explained how there's only four in the game and you have to honey them and it's only 1% chance of them appearing and people spend so long trying to get one of these stupid things that they don't appear? Defog. Grand Underground. Munchlax. It's right here. Come get it. It's waiting for you. It wants to be your friend. Yes, all you need is Defog and into the Grand Underground. Does that sell you on it now? A mon that is hard to get above ground is so easy to find down here. Just put normal statues, walk into this big huge area south of Orberg, and it's right there. You probably have an easier time shiny hunting these things than in the original game too. How could you say no to that? Yeah, I mean this is a good sell. This right here helps the ground on the ground a bit. I love and hate it for certain reasons. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the underground and I still love it in this game, but there's certain aspects of it that makes you want to just... Ugh. Why? But no. This is one of those... Yes! Yes! 
Munchlight's being down here, not having to do the stupid mechanic of finding the trees, finding which five specific ones, are your, four or five are yours, and hunting them to hell, and getting the same ones over and over. Just coming down here and finding this guy waiting. And he even comes with leftovers. It's always gonna happen, except for if one thing happens. He could use fling. If he uses fling, his leftovers are gone. Now, like I said, if someone takes an item from you, it's gone. It, it'll come back at the end of the battle. If he flings it, it's gone for good. This happened to someone on, on, in the group. So don't let him fling. I think you get back if it's if you use it and then after. Don't quote me on that. We do need to catch one of these suckers. Definitely catch one. Please catch one. Don't forget to get one. This is the whole reason why I got Defog, because I really wanted to show you this guy, because he's here now waiting for you. So come get him while he's hot. All you need is Defog. You can have him before Gym 4. I bet we got one now. Skipping the spoilers. And yeah, TGH wants to evolve. He evolves early. He's already past the evolve point. I'm not going to do it. I'll leave him a little whoopee boy because that's what TGHSR likes. He likes whoopers. Hides food under his long body here, however, it, gets the, it has hidden the food. Do I have to give Munchlax a nickname? Not yet. Where are we sending him to? A box. And he has leftovers because he didn't fling them. We'll send to the box as is. He can hold on to him for a midnight snack. And, well, we got one last thing to do. The legendary boy that was a pain to find in Dime Pro and Platinum. He's easier here than there. He evolves into a legendary chonky boy. This Pokemon is known for carrying leftovers. Just don't let him fling it. He'll be a great mod to be a defensive tank. And I am not kidding on defensive tank. He is amazing. So definitely get one. Defog brings new mods to the underground. We got the Spacious Cave, where we have Machoke, Graveler, Apom, Wingle, and Munchlax. And in Perlo only, we got Perugly. Riverbank Cave, Machoke, Munchlax, and Perugly. Grassland Cave, Machoke, Munchlax, and Perugly. Again, anytime I say Perugly, it's Pearl only. This is to get revenge on you diamond-only people who got Skunky and Skunk Tank last time. Stillwater Cavern has Wingle, Munchlax, and Perugly. Bog Swamp Cavern has Wooper and Quagsire. So if you don't want to go and look for them in the park, you can go look for them in Bog Sunk. Donald Spring Cave is another choice for Wooper and Quagsire as well as Wingle. Swampy Cave has Wooper and Quagsire. Sunlit Cavern has Machoke and Perugly. Volcanic Cave now has Gravelers. Rocky Cave has Graveler and Hippopotas if you don't have one yet. Icy Cave and Glacial Cave get nothing, but we wouldn't be able to get there anyway. Whiteout Cave has Machoke and Munchlax. Typhlo Cavern and Graveler. Dazzling Cage, Raffery, and Kadabra. Get a if you haven't yet. Big Love Cavern has your Gravel and Hippopotas added. Starkling Cavern gets Raffery and Kadabra. And Sandsteer Cave gets Hippopotas. With all the stuff added, I'm ending the episode here. Next episode, we'll do something completely different, and then we'll go do something else. I hope you have fun, and I'll see you on the next one. See you then. <laughs>